You know, another note I want to add to winning in the second segment. You know, winning winners, when you look at uh, the great winners of sport, from the outside it looks like there's arrogance. Now, as an athlete, I know the difference between arrogance and confidence. Uh, to the layperson, it may not be very obvious. But every athlete, when they're in battle or in combat in any, in any sense, if it's a combat sport or it's a one-on-one -on -one sport or a team sport, or if you're competitive in business, so think of it as competition. You can see it with two women trying to win over the love of one man. You see it uh, in military. You know, this country is battling that country. Did we win? Uh, th this, this psychology that winners take is interesting. There are some that have this very subdued way about them. They have this quiet con confidence. And, but inside, there's still a knowing that it's going to happen. Whereas some people wear it on their, they wear the chip on their shoulder, and it's very obvious. You know, they, they talk a mean game, they're brash, but they still deliver. So, as a leader, or if you're looking at this segment to see the difference uh, between the way some people, some winners behave, and others, it's not for me to judge what's right or wrong. You decide for yourself how uh, how you're going about winning or how you're going about teaching winning and if you were to be a winner which one would you prefer so think about this is it about acceptance or is it about winning and I think what I've seen is the one the, the times when I haven't won or the times when I've seen other people not reach their potential they were too concerned about what other people thought they had preconceived notions and belief systems around what a winner is uh, the ups and the downs of winning, uh, how they might be perceived, and and or the way they felt about themselves was impairing their ability to win. So wrap your head around that one and uh, see how this fits into uh, the way you're thinking.